So Andrew, we're just doing a walkthrough through this herd. We're just coming up to two cows here who are, in appearance and size-wise, they're, they're quite different. One is quite heavy, or big, we'll say, in terms of a frame and their stature, and the other one, again, is significantly smaller. I suppose there's a lot of discussion and debate about cow size and what's the ideal cow size. Um, and just to go through, like again, if, if this particular farmer wanted to breed cows like the big lady or the small lady, what information is out there within the genetic indexes to allow them to do that? So I suppose um, we have a, in DBI, again back to DBI, we have a, a maintenance uh, sub-index. And um, the smaller cow gets rewarded, she gets a, a positive maintenance sub-index, a higher maintenance, which is added onto the BI, but the bigger cow then gets a, a lower um, maintenance index, which is being penalised. So I suppose the whole reason for this is, and it's become, it's become more important going forward, is like an animal eats 1% or 1.2% uh, or of its own uh, body weight every day. So there's going to be more pressure on the system to maintain a bigger cow. Um, bigger cows, higher intakes, and like these cows would have very similar um, milk sub indexes. So their performance is practically the same. But one is 150 kgs plus more than, than the other. So potentially, this cow will probably eat two ton, uh, two ton of grass extra a year because of our higher life weight. So for argument's sake, a maintenance of zero would equate to 641 kgs live weight and a maintenance of 20 would equate to 541, which is 100 kgs in the difference. Um, and you know, it's that back again to that efficiency. Um, you know, you have two animals doing the same, but one feed intake is less than the other. Uh, and it's all because it's just she's a bigger cow and a more inefficient cow. Now, on the, on the plus, plus side, and we have to look at both sides, you know, she's a higher, give her a higher cow, cow value, yeah. and she'd probably give you a higher dairy beef index calf. Right, okay. So, there, you know, there's, but look, it, what I would say is that if you want a high dairy beef index calf, you probably should be using um, a high dairy beef index uh, bull, and whether it be, uh, uh, you know, whatever, I think, uh, in fairness, ICBF are doing great work there and trying to push the dairy beef index there and have better uh, beef value, but like, you, you shouldn't take away from the efficiency out of the cow, and I suppose this is where I'd feel very strongly about is, you know, don't take away the efficiency of a, of a good cow with good maintenance, you know, to, to push it on to a heavier cow that's going to eat more grass, you're going to have to put maybe put more inputs in there. Uh, you know, like if you want to push the dairy beef index, you know, don't lose it on the efficient cow. Put it in a, in the beef side of things. Okay. Uh, you know, I think I feel very strongly about that. Okay. And it was the the advent and the increase in popularity of and the, the, the performance, I suppose, of sex semen helps that as well. So you can target breeding or breeding replacements from using sex semen and using these high dairy beef index bulls then on the other portion of the herd. 100%. 100%. 100%. And look, in other countries there, you know, for New Zealand for argument's sake, it's live weight per hectare and kgs of milk solids per hectare. So they go hand in hand. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good.